Good morning and welcome to Penzance. In the last video you probably saw me taking the overnight sleeper train from London Paddington down to Penzance and today we've got a few hours to kill until we've got a minibus I think that's going to be taking us from the train station out to Land's End Airport where we're then going to be taking a small light aircraft out to the Isles of Scilly. The bacon butty on the train actually tasted a lot better than what it looked, but I have to confess I'm still quite hungry and because our flight is over lunch time, so we're thinking that we're not going to get checked into our apartment until mid to late afternoon, we've come into the town of Penzance to get a proper filling breakfast and we've heard really good things about the honey pot, which is just next door here, so we'll go on in and get something to eat. breakfast was delicious. I ended up going with the granola and it came with a very tarty fruity compote. There's a little bit of a sprinkling of chia seeds on the top and some really nice yogurt but I have to confess I got major food envy because Andy decided to go with the poached eggs and he let me try a little bit of it and it was amazing because it came with this minty guacamole, a chili jam and then some sprinkled or crumbled up feta cheese on top and then of course with the sourdough bread on the very bottom of it and so i think if i was to go and eat there ever again i would definitely be going with those poached eggs and then just on the side andy ended up going with a simple breakfast tea and i went with an iced americano we've still got a few hours until we need to be at the bus stop to catch our bus transfer out to land's end airport so we've taken a wander along to this park that's a stone's throw from that cafe and it is this gorgeous tropical paradise paradise and it's still only spring, it's still only May. Unlike many commercial airlines such as EasyJet, Ryanair, British Airways, you name it, there seems to be a much lower luggage allowance on the Sky Bus. We're allowed a maximum of 15 kilograms each, or if we're combining it, no bag can be higher than 20 kilograms. In addition to that, we're really, really limited with what we can actually take into the aeroplane itself. For example, I would be allowed to take a lady's handbag, Andy would be allowed to take a small camera, but I have no idea what is deemed to be small. Even our hiking backpacks, we are going to have to check those in. Now, thankfully, it's standard as part of the ticket. If you are not doing a day return, that you can check in two bags. So we've just come a little way down the southwest coastal path, just right next to the train tracks. Gorgeous view out over St. Michael's Mount and we're just going to do a little bit of a swap through of some of our belongings so the stuff that we actually want to take on board the plane with us is coming into my little lady's handbag the thing that is actually allowed on board the plane. <laughs> We ended up booking the private transfer minibus that took us from the train station out to Land's End Airport. It cost £7 each to get out here and the chap who brought us was super friendly and we chatted all of the way because we had so much in common with the love of travelling. We've now arrived to Land's End Airport and it is tiny. I think I've seen coffee shops like Starbucks about a similar size to this but it's really cute. I think everyone who's in here is pretty much on the same flight as us. The check-in process was relatively painless. We just had to take out all of our batteries so for me that was quite a lot. There was like the, this camera's batteries, the GoPro camera batteries, the drone batteries but luckily we'd overheard them saying it to the family in front of us. So we did that all ahead of getting to the very front but other than that the bags have gone through and I think there's probably just a few more minutes until we start boarding onto the teeny tiny aircraft. Whilst in my experience of flying, the Twin Otter was a tiny aircraft and it was ironically the largest at the airport, the others parked up were even smaller. The safety briefing took part inside of the airport terminal where all passengers watched a video similar to what would be projected on individual screens found on the back of a larger aircraft seat. After, we were led onto the tarmac in seating order and waited briefly whilst a fellow passenger got their dog into the pet crate on board. The configuration was two seats, a very narrow aisle and one seat. Andy and I got really lucky both getting window seats allowing us to see the propellers starting up and the view from our seats into the cockpit whilst not the best in the house was still a lot of fun to see both pilots and out of the front as we took off. 
Looking out onto the southwest coast path and seeing parts of the coastline that we'd hiked the summer before and the Longship's lighthouse from a new angle was very cool. There was a short amount of time where water and the odd cargo ship was all that we could see. Then the excitement rippled across the passengers on board as the Isles of Scilly came into view. As this was my first visit to the islands, I didn't know it at the time, but we could see Palestry Beach and Bar Point on St Mary's. I heard a mum exclaiming to her children, it's like the Maldives, and her child innocently answering with, I don't know what the Maldives looks like. The plane turned once it had cleared the Halingy Down radio transmitter and I assumed that we were flying directly above Juliet's Garden and the Golf Club. Looking out into the distance, you can just see the island of St Martins with its swathe of beaches. The cute flower fields bordered by high hedges for protection were a sight to behold from above. Seeing the runway through the cockpit was an amazing experience. So many times I've been on a plane and seen it land looking out of the side windows, but this was a first for me. The flight was amazing. I am so incredibly pleased that I paid just that little bit more to fly instead of getting across on the ferry. We were on a twin otter plane, which meant that I think there were 16 seats and then we had a dog and a crate as well. And oh, it's just been such a wonderful start to get here. And I think, because we can actually see the town from the airport, if I just sort of turn the camera around a little bit, town's sort of behind me over there somewhere. So because we've got a backpack that so we can easily strap to our back, I think we're just going to walk along the country roads and get there ourselves. The airport's just on the hill behind me. It's taken us about five minutes to walk off the hill along a public footpath through farmers' fields, through the old town, which took all of about 30 seconds. And then we've been brought out next to this gorgeous white sand beach with turquoise waters. I think we've just landed in paradise. <laughs> getting the keys for our apartment it was a case of just dumping our bags and really quickly heading straight over to the co-op because we've heard that once the Salonian ferry gets in and also the boats that go to all of the other islands also get in the queues there can be quite horrendous so now that we've stocked up with a little bit of food to see us through the next few days I'm going to do a ridiculously quick whistle stop tour of the apartment that we're staying in. So this is like the living room section. There's a couple of armchairs. They've actually been updated. The photographs that we were sent, they looked a lot more dated than those ones. Small flat screen TV. And then if I swing around, we've then got the kitchen dining area. Weirdly, it only sleeps two people, hence the two armchairs. But then it's a table for four people, fair enough. And then just really, really standard kitchen with a fridge, full oven, four hobs, toaster, all your pots, pans, chopping boards. What's quite nice is that they do have Tupperware in there because it's something that we were going to bring ourselves. And because of the weight issues with the plane, we decided to cull that, but that's great that they've sorted that out for us. Microwave, everything that we really need to be able to cook some of our own meals so we don't have to eat out every single night. Through this doorway here, it leads out into this sort of corridor area with the front door off to this side. And we've got uh, a bathroom here, which 
Ironically, they felt the need to have to put toilet on the door, thinking that we wouldn't have worked that out for ourselves. I think it's been updated within the last couple of years because it's quite a nice new modern looking mirror, newer tiling, white sweet, but unfortunately it does have those really stupid, in my opinion, taps where it's like one for hot and one for cold. So either you can scold yourself or you can have really, really cold fingers and a standard toilet. And then through this door here is the one and only bedroom because it is a one bedroomed apartment. This is kind of where we've dumped most of our stuff. So I do apologize for it being a little bit on the messy side. The other thing that we've noticed as well is that they haven't provided us with any soap in the bathroom. And they've provided us with that next to no loo roll either, given that we're staying here for an entire week. So just a couple of slight niggles about the property you're probably looking at it probably thinking it's also a little bit dated now there is a story behind why we've got this property and why perhaps it doesn't look the most exciting and i will go on to tell you that back in the living room so the story of this apartment 2020 back when the entire world had pretty much closed up and the only kind of travel that people could do if they were lucky was domestic travel that's when my eyes really started to get opened to just how special the Isles of Scilly were. So naturally, I thought, hey, let's book a holiday to the Isles of Scilly. As a full-time permanent secondary school teacher, it means that I am very much limited to only being able to go and travel during peak school holidays. Trying to find accommodation during peak school summer holidays and other holidays is a bit of a nightmare, particularly here in the Isles of Scilly. We fast forward to a little bit later on in 2020 when I realized that we're not going to be able to come here during that year and I'm thinking about maybe 2021 and I've realized that I'm still a little bit too late so I start reaching out to accommodation providers to ask them hey do you have any availability for the May half term of 2022 what I've realized happens is that most people don't allow for there to be bookings more than 12 months in advance and this one woman who had reached out to who owns an apartment here said contact me 12 months to go and we'll see then. So about 13 months prior to now, I reached out to her and said, hey, don't forget about me in a month's time. Please make sure that you've not forgotten about me because I still really want to rent that apartment from you. And she came back and said, what we'll do is we'll ask the people who've stayed there during the May half term week of 2021 and see if they want first dibs on it on 2022. And if they don't, then sure, we'll come back to you and let you know. And this is when I learned that that's how the Isles of Scilly operate. Everyone who has been staying there the year before, they get first dibs on going back and staying in the property the year after. And it turns out this place is so special, people come back here year after year. So, oh no, how on earth am I gonna be able to find an apartment? And the lady came back to me at the 12 month point, she said, I'm really sorry, but the people who've stayed there, they want to stay on again next year, which is basically this week. So the next thing that I ended up doing, and this is so unlike me, is I went to an agency. I asked them if they had any availability for the May half term holiday, and they said the way in which they operate is they give everyone one month to decide whether they want to come back again for the same week. If they say yes, then it's gone, it's theirs, and if they say no, they'll then release it to the open market. Therefore, did I want to be added to their mailing list? So of course I said yes. A few days before they were about to release any holiday homes, they emailed me along with many other people saying, it's been incredibly popular. There's a lot of you that want properties. We have three. That's three that was Saturday to Saturday. You can't get on or off the islands on a Sunday. So that was out of the window. I obviously can't arrive on a Friday because I'm teaching on a Friday and I can't arrive and leave on a Monday because I'd be expected to be back in the classroom on the Monday. So I had three properties to choose from. I called Andy through and we sat down and we went through the three properties that were going to come onto the market and decided on what our favourite was, our second favourite and our third. The day that it was released, I got up at six o'clock in the morning, it's the time that I get up every single day to go to work, went straight downstairs, switched on my computer, clicked on the first link, that property was gone. Clicked on our second favourite link, that property was gone. I clicked on our third option, which is this place and it was available. So really, really quickly clicked on book, got that deposit paid to secure it. So even though it might not seem like it's the most luxurious of places, it does seem a little bit dated in some areas and yeah, okay, they've perhaps missed a few things out, such as hand soap in the bathroom. At this point, I'm just really, really grateful that we've managed to get somewhere on the Isles of Scilly for May half term. But right now, 
our tummies are big time rumbling. So I think we're gonna head out and see if we can pick up some takeaway from somewhere. A slightly more tiring start to this week's holiday. So we've ended up going along to Silly Fish. Silly Fish, which is just like a food truck that is a stone's throw from our apartment for some fish and chips takeaway. You've gone with. I've gone with a lovely bit of cod. So battered cod, whereas I've ended up going with some breaded place instead. And what was interesting is when I did the vlog on St. Ives, one of the things that I was pointing out is that the seagulls were really, really vicious and they'd like attack this small girl's ice cream and she missed out because they all just went for it. And a few people left comments on that video giving the tip of getting your back up against a higher wall because the seagulls like to swoop down from behind. Whereas if you've got a wall behind you, they're less likely to, to do that. So I'm trying it out for the very first time. I can see seagulls. They are, they are definitely sensing that we've got food. So far so good, but we've only been at this for what, like a minute, two minutes, so we'll just see how we go. And this stunning beach with almost still sea waters is what we've just gone and sat having our fish and chips looking out onto. The trick actually worked. I mean, there are literally seagulls everywhere i think looking out for their opportunities but having that really high bit of wood behind us was perfect we actually got to look out onto this whilst we were eating but i think we're gonna wrap up because we had a really early dinner this evening probably started eating at about 5 30 but we can see that lots of other people are still wanting to eat and it's a bit of a prime spot with picnic benches in here so i think we're gonna go for a little bit of a wander and see what St Mary's has got and I suppose get our bearings a little bit so that we can work out what we're going to do tomorrow where we need to head where we go to buy our boat tickets and so on